Well, welcome. This is Thursday Night Education, and we are doing, this is part of the Essential Oily Cafe team, and for the month of January and beginning of February of 2023, we've been talking about gut health and liver support. And so today, we're super excited because what goes along with gut health, but healthy food choices. So <laughs> we're super excited. We're going to have Sue today. Olson is going to be teaching us, instead of you guys always hearing me, uh, which is exciting. So Sue is going to teach you guys today a little bit about diet and diet choices and food and recipes. So there are recipes on here. Don't feel like you have to scramble to write them down. We will post them for you so that you can get them um, in our ELC chat or whoever invited you to the class, please ask them. We will make sure that you get these recipes so you can just enjoy and watch and you don't have to write those things down. Um, but I am going to start sharing my screen um, so that Sue has, a, Sue, do you want me to start your PowerPoint already? Um, sure, with the first slide, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna share away and you guys just let me know that you can see my screen. Perfect, well, welcome everybody. You're in my kitchen joining me tonight um, on this uh, February night. And um, as Jennifer introduced, we are continuing to talk about food choices, and one of those things are um, we don't always think about, at least I don't. So it was good for me to do some research. Have to look in there. And um, so we're going to be talking about, you can go to the next slide, Jennifer. Fiber. Just take them now, um, when I talk about fiber, to my husband, he says, oh, roughage, popcorn. Well, it's a little more in depth than that, okay? Um, and in some people's books, popcorn doesn't count. So um, I think most of us know fiber. When we talk about that, we talk about fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, right? That is good for us. That's nutritious for us. But sometimes I don't know that we totally understand fiber. So first of all, what is fiber? Fiber is the structural part of plant foods, okay? So it's not a red steak, that doesn't count as fiber. Um, our body eliminates it. It uses what it can from it and eliminates it, right? Um, high fiber foods have to have a minimum of five grams per serving of dietary fiber. Keep that in mind because as you go grocery shopping and look at things, check out what the fiber contact is, content is. Again, eating raw fruits and vegetables are very key. Um, now, some people love juicing, which you get a lot of nutrition from it, but you don't get the fiber. So if your diet particularly is lacking fiber, the raw fruits and vegetables daily is good. With fiber, what is essential with that? plenty of water right because it has to move through your whole digestive system right and be eliminated I said it gets eliminated so there's two different kinds of fiber soluble and insoluble soluble that dissolves in water forms like a gummy gel things that would be considered soluble fiber would be dried beans, oats, barley, banana, potato, um, the soft parts of apples and pears. So that ex would exclude the peel for the soluble part. The, um, the insoluble, and these definitions are um, per um, myclevelandclinic.org. Uh, you can check out fiber through there and th they have all kinds of information for you. Insoluble, that's the more considered the roughage part, um, doesn't dissolve in water. So that's totally what gets eliminated. It holds on to water, kind of grabs it, and it creates the regularity of your stools, um, making them easier to pass. These items would be whole beans, whole grain, nuts, carrots, grapes, 
berries, apple peels. The whole idea is that you're increasing the bulk in your digestive tract and the speed that it's moving through um, your system. And with that, it, it decreases the time harmful substances can build up. So everybody talks about, you know, you need to be regular and, um, and there's a reason for that, right? Because then you can be help, the healthier you can be. Um, <clears throat> what, so that's a lot of what fiber does. But in addition, um, I think I got this per the Cleveland um, Clinic. Uh, it may decrease cholesterol, uh, may better regulate blood sugar levels, may help weight control because it keeps you fuller and you're eating less, um, may prevent um, other diseases. And fiber does pull water into your colon so that you can have regular passage of your stools. So that's just kind of a general non-scientific at <laughs> all explanation. <clears throat> but um, now some examples. You can go to the, the next um, picture, Jennifer. <clears throat> so these are some items that are gonna be in the baking that I did uh, for this presentation tonight. So let's just look at the einkorn flour. If you look on the back for one fourth cup serving, there is, dietary fiber of two grams. That's pretty good. If you think about it, a fourth cup isn't very much, right? You compare that to um, organic, regular fl white flour, there's one fiber in a fourth cup. Next, let's go to more of a powerhouse, flaxseed. I don't know if anybody, everybody knows what it is. But flaxseed has a very hard shell to it. If you would just put this in your diet, it would go through and you would not reap any of the benefits of this powerhouse because it's hard and your body can't do anything with it. So the key to getting the most benefit from flaxseed, a coffee grinder. And the best thing to do is to only ground it as you need it. Now, if you do like me, I usually end up doing more. I just freeze it until next time. So it stays as, as um, fresh as possible. So that's flaxseed. Flaxseed, two tablespoons of it ground, contains four grams of fiber total. And two grams of soluble. So you don't have to remember these, this just kind of gives you some comparison of foods that we probably don't think about. The next powerhouse is chia seeds. Does everybody know what chia seeds is? I know growing up, the only chia, chia I knew was chia peck grass. So I, some of you can relate to that. <laughs> so two tablespoons of chia seeds. Any takers, how many grams of fiber total? 10 grams. The soluble is seven grams. So that's what helps move things through your body. Okay, um, one of the recipes, I have chickpeas in it. So let's take a look at what one cup of chickpeas, which is canned or cooked, the total, the total grams is 12.5. Bet you didn't know that one. <laughs> Most of us eat oatmeal at some point in our life or have, if not presently. One cup of raw oatmeal is 6.5 grams of fiber. One cup of cooked, um, oatmeal is a total of four grams of fiber and soluble is two grams. So I wanted to include that just to give you a comparison 
of how some of these foods you can incorporate into your preparation of foods you eat. Now, <clears throat> some people put ground flaxseed in their oatmeal smoothies. You can put it in, you can put it in bread. You can probably put it on almost anything, brownies, whatever. Chia seeds, you can do the same, but chia seed because of the volume of liquid it takes in, remember how many grams of total fiber it had, it would have a little different texture and impact your outcome a little bit. So with all that laid out, um, I'm not discounting at all the importance of fresh fruits and vegetables every day. Living in the Midwest, and after just having a whole day snowstorm, there's times when fresh produce isn't very good. So I still want to have fiber. And when it's colder out, I don't know about you, but I do more baking. So let's go on to the next slide, Jennifer. So the first item, and just do a screenshot of it. As you can see, it has um, chia seeds in it. Doesn't really look like it when it bakes up. Looks pretty good, it's pretty light, pretty tasty. And I love to use, the recipe does say to grease, but I use a pan that I don't have to grease it. Just wait for it to cool a little bit and pop it right out. The other trick is if you don't want to add extra oil or grease, coconut oil, whatever you're using to grease your pans, you can cut pieces of parchment paper to put it in and that way you have your all individual muffins that you can pop out too. So that's the lemon chia seed muffin recipe. It includes oat, so that's fiber. It has einkorn flour, that's fiber. Uh, it has the chia seeds. Um, it has unsweetened applesauce, so not a lot of fiber there, but that's your sweetener. And if you notice, it has four tablespoons of maple syrup. Now, most muffins, how many cups of sugar do you put in? Probably at least a cup, right? <laughs> For a dozen muffins. So this is, is a very um, nutritious, healthy recipe. It can be for breakfast, it can be for snacks. It could be um, tomorrow night, I'll probably make some zucchini uh, uh, pasta with some um, uh, marinara and ground beef on it. And I'm gonna have these muffins instead of having garlic bread. So you can implement it so easily into your menus and they're real easy to make. I know sometimes looking at the list of ingredients, it seems like a lot. It's not really. The great thing about this one with the cost of eggs and baking, guess what? You can use your ground flax seed and make a flax egg. And that's the, the note that's on the bottom there. So I didn't even use an egg for this. And it still grows nicely because when you put the lemon juice, and the baking soda and baking powder together, it creates a very nice chemical reaction <laughs> that causes your muffins to be light and fluffy. So um, these healthy ingredients can really benefit you. Let's go on to the next one, Jennifer. Okay, um, this is chip and uh, chia cookies, again, this could be for breakfast on the go, a snack on the go, a snack before um, a practice. i got to grab them here, sorry. My arms aren't long. Enough. So I wish you could smell them because every time I take the cover off, it just smells awesome. They look like chocolate chip cookies, don't they? But the, the, I don't know if you remember when I was listing off items that have fiber, nuts. So there's raw sprouted walnuts, raw sprouted almonds in it. So does anybody know how to sprout nuts? Very easy. This is my example. So almonds typically come with that shell on, right? 
Did you know that shell is very hard for your body to digest? So to help that digestion process, you basically soak it in filtered water, good, good water. You don't want to put chlorinated water in it to soak it. And then um, you can just peel these off. And like this, you put in a food processor to make butter out of it, to make nut butter out of it for the recipe. And by doing that, you're also gonna save your food processor because it's not gonna to have to work so hard because it's softer. If you ever have a raw nut, especially almonds, they're really, really hard, aren't they? And if you chew them, you gotta chew them really good because otherwise you swallow them. It's... So your body works harder at digesting it. It's, it's fiber, but it's sometimes hard to digest for some people. So taking that little outer peel shell off that nut is very beneficial for your digestive system. And it tastes awesome, still tastes as good as ever. Um, trying to remember if there's something else I wanted to point out. Oh, sometimes people are like, oh, they're so good. Why are you making them so small? Well, remember there's a lot of added fiber in there. Are most of us accustomed to eating a lot of fiber every day? because then we need to drink a lot more water, don't we? <laughs> so to me, a small one is perfect. Two at the most, it's still smaller than most cookies and you get the flavor and um, the satisfaction. There's a little sweet because there's stevia sweet and chocolate chips in it. And I, you can, instead of putting dried cranberries in, you can put wolfberries, uh, um, excuse me, as the recipe said, I did dried cranberries and the wolfberries, Young Living's wolfberries. And to make it more like a raisin, I soaked them a little bit, drained off the water, drank that because that's all beneficial, right? <laughs> um, but to made it more like the dried cranberry and like a raisin. But you can also use dried cherries. Now this week I couldn't find any dried cherries, cherries in my town. So I used what I had. So that's the great thing about these recipes too. You can use what you have. And um, most people know I do that because I'm creative in my kitchen. I hope you have fun with that too. But again, um, the, the hardest part of this recipe is <clears throat> taking about five minutes to um, use the food processor for the nuts. And then you just mix the rest of the ingredients together and scoop. I use a very small scoop. And I think it's, not that I'm just getting ready for grandkids that are gonna be eating them, but <laughs> I think it's good for all of us to help with portion control, right? Next one, please. Okay. Now this one I did some experiment with, some experiment, experimentation with our golden turmeric, which I totally love. So it makes kind of a, now this has been sitting out for a while, so it's kind of got a little more jelly-like than harder, but it, ooh, I don't want to pour it on my computer. Um, <laughs> it, um, it tastes so awesome. I, I can't even, I wish I could have everybody taste it. Smells awesome. The mango rose of the golden turmeric supplement and uh, some of the, where's my cinnamon bark. Awesome. And for this one, I used white chia seeds because I didn't want to see as many black but you could either use any, either one. Um, something I forgot to mention about uh, chia seeds in general, they do last a long time. And if you're not gonna use them, probably best to store them in a cool place, a refrigerator or freezer. And after year, year and a half, they may not be as effective in um, gelling and solidifying whatever you're using it for. So these were closer to a year and a half old and it's a little more soupy, but it's also been sitting out for half an hour. 
almost 45 minutes. But um, I ate one this afternoon as my lunch, filled me up and was delicious. Absolutely delicious. Like I could have that for uh, a snack any day, anytime, just saying. But again, I made sure I drank plenty of water with it. <laughs> the other thing I um, did investigate while I was preparing for this class is I checked out uh, drjockers.com. Uh, for, for any of you who know that I do follow him and I check out lots of his um, information that he has. And he talked about um, carminative herbs and it's spelled C-A-R-M-I-N-I-T-I-V-E herbs. So what are those? Those are herbs that can stimulate the digestive system to help it work better. And it does so by toning the mucus surfaces and increasing the parasocial, however you say it, <laughs> um, action, basically the movement of um, food and elimination, right? So once you know it, Young Living is so amazing with their vitality essential oils. The ones he listed as herbs, we have oils. Now I don't have all the um, vitality ones for him and one of them isn't, but just to give you an idea, I don't know if you can see any of it, but peppermint, thyme, coriander, cinnamon, which were in any, all of my recipes, ginger, juniper, which is topical, fennel, clove, caraway, and dill. Now, isn't that awesome that we have right through our young living available to order things that will help your digestive system and flavor burst your food. So I left one of the rest, the best recipes for last because we are in the month of um, February, flourless brownie muffins. Now, I have to tell you, chocolate is my husband's favorite. Brownies is his favorite. He has never celebrated when I've made black bean brownies. And I've tried a couple different recipes. Um, he tried these. And they are super light. And to make them more look like a brownie, I have a square pan that I put them in. Mmm, so good. And I put peppermint in them too. The peppermint vitality. So obviously you can add more or less depending on what your taste buds love. I love peppermint and um, so easy to make, just so, so easy to make. And again, um, you put them in a pan so you can pop them out and have it easy. They're already pre-cut. You can freeze these if you want. Um, most of these will stay well in a airtight container. But for just the two of us right now, I'm going to freeze some of these because we won't eat. We shouldn't eat them fast enough because then we're going to have to drink more water than we need to. Just say it. <laughs> so um, we can stop the recording and open up questions if there's anything else. I hope it um, helped everybody. Awesome. Sir.